This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 216. Seven Big Benefits of Blending. Five shocking but healthy foods you can safely put in your blender. And does blending destroy fiber? Part one by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm your host, Dr. Neil Malik. It's another Monday episode of Optimal Health Daily. If you're new here, this is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. And that includes Ben Greenfield, who I'm reading today and tomorrow. This article is on the longer side, so I'll read the first half today and finish it for you tomorrow. So this past weekend, I hosted some friends and we had dinner and a game night. I cooked for everybody. And I learned something about myself last weekend. I consider myself a moderately intelligent person, But when it comes to learning board games, I don't know why it takes me forever to actually learn them. So we played this board game, Pandemic. Don't know if you've heard of it, but it's cool because you all work as a team towards one common goal. It's not super competitive. You're all working together, which I really like. But I don't know if it was just this game because there's so many intricacies to it, but it took me forever to try and figure out what was what and what's going on. It kind of hurt my self-esteem. But anyways, we actually did end up winning the game, which is pretty cool. But I think I need to play it like two, three more times to actually figure out whether I really understood what was going on. All right, enough about that stuff. Before we get to the reading, I wanna remind you that this isn't the only show where we read you blogs. We just launched our fifth podcast in our network. It's called Optimal Living Daily Relationships. And it features our first female host, Jocelyn. She's reading from many of the same authors that you hear on this show, like Leo Babauta of Zen Habits, Good Life Zen, and Steve Pavlina. So definitely check it out. Just search for Optimal Living Daily Relationships where you're hearing this show and make sure you're subscribed. And now let's hear part one of Ben's post and start optimizing your life. Seven Big Benefits of Blending. Five shocking but healthy foods you can safely put in your blender And Does Blending Destroy Fiber? Part one by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of blending and I've definitely been seen on YouTube producing some pretty weird things in my blender, including my high-fat ketogenic kale smoothie. But why exactly am I such a blender nerd? And why is my blender a staple in my kitchen so that it ranks right up there with a fork, a plate, and my giant red wine glass? First, let's delve into seven big benefits of blending. One, blending is fast. I sometimes use an omega masticating juicer, but it can take a very long time to prepare fruits and vegetables for juicing, and the cleanup is a big headache. So I juice about one-tenth as much as I blend. Speed is important to me, especially in the morning. Two, blending is filling, if you blend at the right thickness. I blend my smoothie super thick so that I can chew the smoothie and eat it with a spoon, which allows the digestive enzymes in my mouth to pre-initiate digestion and make me fuller faster. Because I'll often spend a good 30 to 45 minutes reading articles, talking with my kids, or sorting through the mail while I nibble away at my smoothie, I'm often more full than if I'd sat down quickly to gulp down bacon and eggs. Three, blending doesn't spike your blood sugar as much as juicing. Fiber is one great way to lower the glycemic index of a food. Juicing eliminates just about every shred of fiber, while blending does not. Four, blending produces less waste. I blend just about every little thing except the shell of my Brazil nuts. So the only thing I really need to clean after blending is the BPA-free blender jar itself and the spatula I use to scrape every last bit of goodness out of the blender. Five, Blending allows you to easily consume superfood cocktails. Let's face it, superfoods like corella, maca, spirulina, cacao, goji berries, chia seeds, flax seeds, and protein powder are hard to eat with your hands out of a Ziploc bag. Dumping these kinds of things into a blended smoothie makes it far easier to deliver boatloads of nutrients to your body. Six, blending makes it easy to eat your vegetables. Just like juicing, Making giant salads can also be extremely time-consuming. Don't get me wrong, I love sitting down to my lunchtime big salad, but often don't have the time or need to work through lunch. So I'll often put the entire day's serving of kale, bok choy, spinach, broccoli, cilantro, parsley, and other greens into my blender and dump it all into my giant lucky mug. And no, you don't need to worry about those goitrogens. Seven, blending also makes it easy to eat your fats. By dumping everything from avocados to coconut milk 
choose BPA-free coconut milk, to coconut oil, to MCT oil, to flaxseed oil, hemp seed oil, and extra virgin avocado oil into your blender, you can easily reach your daily needs for anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids and other fats that are crucial for your cholesterol, blood, joint, brain, and nerve health. Ready to blend? Then let's delve into some very interesting things that you can safely put into your blender and then see what you can do about blending without potentially destroying the fiber of your fruits and vegetables. Five shocking but healthy foods you can safely put in your blender and your body. One, eggshells. Eggshells contain 27 essential minerals and trace elements, including calcium carbonate, a form of calcium that's very biologically compatible with and similar to the calcium in our bones and teeth. In animal and human tests, eggshell calcium has been shown to increase bone density, reduction of arthritic pain, and stimulation of cartilage growth. One last thing, if you make a habit of dropping a whole egg into your smoothie, consider spraying and wiping down the outside of the egg quickly with a vinegar and water solution, or better yet, an oil of oregano and water solution. This will help ensure you kill any germs that might be living on the eggshell. Two, avocado seeds. Yes, you can just drop the whole avocado into your blender just like I do. Avocado seeds have 70% of the antioxidants found in the whole avocado, and avocado seed oil is also chock full of antioxidants that specifically limit the oxidation of cholesterol, which may help to prevent cardiovascular disease and assist with joint repair and autoimmune function. Avocado seeds have more soluble fiber than oatmeal and just about any other food. Avocado seeds can be nourishing and healing for inflammation in your GI tract and for diarrhea. In South America, avocado seeds are used for dysentery and other gut problems and have a variety of phenolic compounds that help to prevent gastric ulcers and bacterial and viral diseases. They even contain a flavanol that specifically prevents tumor growth, which is why avocado seed powder has been studied in rats with cancer. Avocado seed oil can also increase collagen formation, helping to keep your joints supple and your skin moist, young, and wrinkle-free, along with bringing shimmer to your hair. Avocado seed extract studies also show that the seed can lower blood glucose and helps you lose weight. And in qi gong medicine, avocado seeds are considered to be very high in qi energy. They're slightly bitter when you eat them solo, but when you drop them into your blended smoothie, you won't notice any bitter taste. Three, hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled, Seven Big Benefits of Blending, Five Shocking But Healthy Foods You Can Safely Put in Your Blender, and Does Blending Destroy Fiber? by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. And as I said, we'll hear the rest tomorrow. Now, blending and juicing are definitely hot trends right now. I figured it was a matter of time before this came up during one of my Friday Q&A episodes. So why not read a fitness expert's take on it to introduce this topic? When someone tells me that they're blending or juicing, I start to get a little nervous. This is because usually fruit is the main ingredient, and it's really easy to get way too much fruit when you blend or juice. And all of that fruit can lead to more fat storage because you overwhelm the liver a little bit. But what I particularly liked about what Ben mentioned is you can add vegetables to your blender, and that's an easy way to get your vegetables in each day. It's actually something I recommend for people who have a tough time getting enough vegetables in in their diets. I don't mind so much when they consume a vegetable smoothie, but I do mind if they consume a fruit smoothie. Vegetables are naturally lower in sugar and calories. And so a big glass of a pure vegetable smoothie is not gonna cause all that much harm, and yet they're still gonna get the benefits of all those vitamins and minerals. And when it comes to eggshells and incorporating them into your blended mixture, I was so glad Ben mentioned killing off any harmful bacteria first. It's estimated that for every two eggshells, one has a live version of the salmonella bacterium on it. These are eggs that are grown non-organically, by the way. But that means half of the eggs you buy, provided they're not certified organic, has this salmonella bacterium on their eggshells. And salmonella infections aren't fun. Vomiting, diarrhea, and fever are the most common symptoms. Now, Ben also mentioned dropping a whole egg into your mixture. I would actually recommend against this. We have the same risk for salmonella, and we realized that when you consume a whole raw egg, your body actually doesn't absorb most of those nutrients. You actually have to cook the egg to really get the protein, for example, from the egg into your body. 
Lastly, I'll address this idea of adding superfoods to your blender. What we're finding is that some of the powdered forms of these foods, like protein powders, for example, aren't absorbed as well by the body as if you had eaten a real food. So just be aware that you may be better off adding whole foods to your blender as opposed to more processed forms. Plus, with protein, the body is really only able to absorb about 20 to 30 grams at a time. So if you're getting any more than that, your body probably won't use it. And lastly, like I always say, be sure that any supplements you do use are free of impurities before using them. Now, like I mentioned at the top of the show, we recently launched a fifth podcast in our network of Reading You Blogs. It's called Optimal Living Daily Relationships, and it covers everything that has to do with better relationships, from dating to parenting and everything in between. And Jocelyn reads from many of the same authors you hear on this show. So we'd love it if you could show some support for Jocelyn too. Just search for Optimal Living Daily Relationships wherever you're hearing this show and make sure you subscribe. All right, I'm signing off for this Monday episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll finish this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.